Here we're going to do a, a, a quick proof on why we never exercise an American call option on a non-dividend paying stock. The idea of this, of course, is if we know we'll never exercise the, the American call, uh, then it has to be, you know, then the price will be equal to the European call. So this is the idea of, um, or the idea behind using a, um, something like Black-Scholes, which is a values European calls to value American calls. Why, it, you know, it may work in, solely in the case when the, the stock does not pay a dividend. So the idea of proving why we never exercise um, this call option is to uh, create two portfolios and, and see that one portfolio dominates another and has to have, uh, therefore has to have a higher price. So uh, we'll construct portfolio A, uh, and portfolio A will, will be uh, uh, portfolio A will consist of buying a call and then also uh, buying a bond. Uh, with a present value of K1 plus R. So, the, the, of course, uh, this is the strike price on the call. So, in other words, I buy a call and then I buy a bond whose face value, par value, uh, will pay the strike price uh, at the end of the period, at maturity of the option. Um, uh, of course, this is a zero coupon bond and this is the risk free rate over that period, right? So, if this is a call maturing in six months, then this is a six month zero, um, which will have a fee, which will pay K uh, in six months. Uh, the other portfolio is simply buy stock. So now we have to compare the pay uh, the payoff on these two portfolios. So the payoff on A, we have to compare. We have to look at the payoff in all states of the world. Now, when we're dealing with uh, an option here, there's only two states of the world. The stock is greater uh, than the strike price at expiration, or the stock is less than the strike price at expiration. So we can look at it this. So the stock price. Is Expiration being big T, the stock price is greater than the strike price, and the stock price is less than the strike price. Of course, uh, the call option in this case, the call option is going to pay, so this is the payoff, uh, it's going to pay S sub T minus K. And if the stock price is less than the strike price at expiration, the call is going to pay zero. Uh, the bond is going to pay K in both states of the world, so this is the second part of our portfolio. So, uh, the idea here is the payoff uh, on the entire portfolio is just going to be the sum here. So, it's going to pay, and I'll write this a little bit up. So, this is, this is the payoff on portfolio A, um, payoff. It's going to pay uh, in ST, this state of the world, it's going to pay S of T. Uh, and in this lower state of the world, it's going to pay K. I know this cuts off below there, so I don't want to write too low because this is going to be the important piece. So uh, this is the payoff on Portfolio A. Of course, keep in mind, uh, it pays K when the stock price is less than K, right? Now compare this to the payoff on Portfolio B. Obviously, the, the payoff on Portfolio B is going to be, uh, if, if, S, um, if the stock price is greater than K, right? if the stock price is less than K, of course, in both states of the world, it just pays the stock price. But notice that in this state of the world, uh, the stock price here is lower than here, right? Is lower than K. So the idea here is portfolio A dominates portfolio B. Uh, portfolio A equals portfolio B if the stock price is greater than the strike at expiration, and portfolio A pays off more than portfolio B in the case where the stock price is less than the strike. So uh, uh, in one state of the world, portfolio A pays the same, in the other state of the world, it pays better. Therefore, the cost of portfolio A must be higher than the cost of portfolio B. Therefore, uh, from this, we can get uh, the call price at time zero. So the cost of this is the call price at time zero uh, plus the present value of the bond, 1 plus R, has to be greater than the stock price at time zero. Of course, from this, we, this, this simply implies that the call price at time zero is greater than the stock price at time zero minus K over one plus R. And this, so long as the risk-free rate is positive, so long as, you know, so long as R is greater than zero, this is greater than um, uh, stock at time zero minus K. This is what you would get if you exercised uh, the call option. So what this says is the call option is always greater than what you would get for exercising it. 
So this is why you would never exercise the call option prior to expiration. That doesn't mean you, you definitely hold on to the call option uh, until expiration. You can sell the call, right? You certainly can get out of the position by selling the call. But you, to get out of the position, if you hold a call option, an American call and a non-dividend paying stock, then to get out of the position, you always sell the call because that will earn you more than exercising it. Um, good. So that's the gist of the idea. Now, uh, what you can also do, there's a couple ways to do this. So uh, the way I'm laying it out here is, is similar to the way Merton did in, in um, continuous time finance. Uh, you can also uh, construct different portfolios and prove the same thing. So uh, let me construct a different portfolio and, and allow you to, to go through and see if you can get to this same relationship. So ultimately, uh, the relationship you want to get to is right here. Right? So you want to um, use these two portfolios to get to that relationship. So you want this. Uh, and take as your portfolios, uh, let's take portfolio B. Uh, instead of buying the stock this time, uh, there's only one and you buy the call. Uh, and in portfolio A, say one, you buy the stock. And two, uh, you borrow. Borrow, K, okay, one plus R. Note that in the last one, when we say we buy the bond, buying the bond is equivalent to lending. So in this case, you're not lending, you're borrowing. Um, so use this, you know, now compare the payoff uh, at expiration to portfolio A, uh, to portfolio B. Uh, see which always pays more and see if you can get to that um, uh, conclusion using these portfolios. Uh, and then, again, the idea here, the ultimate implication of what we're doing is to show that... Um, the, the uh, American call price should be uh, equivalent to the European call price. If there's no dividend.